Okay, select the incorrect statement. Right. Uh, <clears throat> incorrect statement. Written and oral communication do not belong to verbal communication. That is wrong. Written communication, you use verbs. Oral communication, you use verbs. So both written and oral communication rely on verbal language, making them forms of Verbal communication. Written communication is more appropriate for formal communication. Correct. Usually we speak, we, we speak in informal communication. Sometimes we speak in formal communication. School assembly, we speak, that is formal communication. Office meeting, we speak, that is formal communication. But most of the time, written communication is more appropriate for formal communication. Formal letters, newspaper articles, that is formal communication. Oral communication mostly takes place face to face. Yes. Even now, I am talking to you through video. That is also face to face oral communication. Verbal communication is not time consuming. That's correct. When comparing with written communication, to write 200 words, it takes some time. But to speak 200 words, it doesn't take that much of time. Verbal communication is not time consuming. Oral communication is often used in informal communication. Correct. We use written communication more and more in formal communication. We use oral communication more and more in informal communication. <clears throat> in order to give prominence to the character, the camera shot or the camera angle that should be used when filming a scene where the protagonist in a movie walks out of the courthouse after winning the case. You know, protagonist means the hero in the film. Antagonist is the villain in the film, right? The prot protagonist is a lawyer in a film or someone, the defendant or the plaintiff, the petitioner, whatever, right? The protagonist wins the case in a court, courthouse, district court, magistrate court, whatever. Right? After winning the case, he leaves the courthouse in the film. So you have to show him in a high angle. That is the best camera shot. That is the best camera angle to give prominence to the character. In this scenario, not low angle, right? A low angle shot makes the character appear larger and more powerful, emphasizing their victory and success. Right? That is the best uh, camera shot, not high angle, sorry. That's low angle. High angle means... You are five feet tall. The camera is placed at a ten feet place. Then the camera looks looks down you, right? You look small. But when the when you are five feet tall and camera is placed at a one feet tall, one foot tall uh, stool or something. The camera looks up you, not looks down you. Then you look like a more hero, more protagonist. 
the low angles what makes the character appear larger and more powerful emphasizing their victory and success long shot long shot is a camera angle long shot is a camera shot long shot shows the subject's entire body and some of their surroundings often used to establish the scene or setting entire body your face to your feet right they show your face to your feet that is long shot some of your surroundings you have your chair whatever the thing right some of your surroundings often used to establish the scene or setting establishing example a shot of a character standing in front of a court house showing the building's grandeur and the character's place within it what is close up close up focuses on a specific part of the subject's body such as their face or hands used to convey emotions or highlight details example a shot of the protagonist's triumphant smile as they walk out of the court house very easily we can see the protagonist's smile that is close up close up number 3 extreme long shot an extreme long shot shows the subject from a great distance making them appear very small in the frame used to emphasize vast landscapes or the insignificance of a character large area a shot of the court house example a shot of the court house from a distance showing its location within the city number 4 high angle the camera is positioned above the subject looking down on them can make the subject appear vulnerable or insignificant a uh, example a shot of the protagonist walking out of the court house taken from a high angle possibly from a nearby building this could be used to show the character's smallness in comparison to the imposing structure of the law <clears throat> remember the choice of camera shot the choice of camera angle depends on the desired effect and the story being told in this case a low angle shot would be most effective choice to emphasize the protagonist's victory and power what is least important not most important what is least important in media studies media literacy media literacy is very important critical media usage that is also very important how to use media critically writing ability that is not that much of important right you don't need the writing ability if to read a newspaper you need <coughs> reading ability to use television you you need eyes the ability to look the ability to do watch where to you use radio you need the listening ability that's all you need writing ability to become a writer right <clears throat> that is the least important one number 4 understanding of media culture we must understand what is media culture language proficiency that is also you need right that thing also you need because uh, now i am speaking in english i am teaching in english you need the english language proficiency to understand what i am teaching writing ability while writing skills can be helpful in media studies they are not as crucial as the other four factors media literacy critical media usage understanding media culture and language proficiency are essential for analyzing interpreting and critically evaluating media content
Media literacy is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, create, and participate with media. Media literacy helps individuals to understand how media messages are constructed, how they influence our thoughts and behaviors, and how to critically evaluate the information we consume. It empowers us to make informed decisions and to be active participants in the media landscape. <clears throat> Number two, critical media usage. The ability to analyze media critically and to question the messages and values that are being presented. Critical media usage helps us to identify bias, stereotypes, and propaganda in media content. It enables us to think critically about the information we consume and to form our own opinions. Number three, understanding media culture. The knowledge and understanding of the cultural context in which media is produced and consumed. Is it produced in Sinhalese culture? Is it produced and consumed in Hindu culture? That is right. Understanding media culture helps us to understand how media reflects and shapes our society. It helps us to see how media can be used to reinforce or challenge existing power structures and to promote social change. Number four, language proficiency. The ability to use language effectively in different contexts, that is language proficiency. Language proficiency is essential for understanding and interpreting media content. It allows us to access a wider range of media sources and to engage with them critically. All of these factors are important for understanding the role of media in our society and for being able to navigate the complex media landscape. The basic requirement in media literacy is the interpretation of the message. That is the basic requirement in media literacy, right? <clears throat> media literacy. Interpretation involves understanding the meaning and significance of a media message. Understand the significance of the media message. This is the foundation for further analysis, evaluation and synthesis. While the other options are important aspects of media literacy, interpretation is the starting point. Before evaluating the message, we must interpret. Before analyzing the message, we must interpret. Before the synthesis of the message, we must interpret. Before the acquisition of the message, we must interpret. What is evaluation of the message? Assessing the quality, accuracy and reliability of a media message. Example, evaluating a news article by checking the source's credibility, looking for evidence to support claims and identifying any biases or potential misinformation. Analysis of the message, breaking down the media message into its component parts to understand how it works. Break down the message into several parts that is analyzing the message analyzing example analyzing a commercial by identifying the target audience what is the target audience of this advertisement the persuasive techniques used how do they try to persuade people in this advertisement and the underlying message that means the hidden message number three synthesis of the message Combining different pieces of information from various sources to form a new understanding. Combine different pieces of information from various sources to form a new understanding. Synthesizing information, example, synthesizing information from multiple news sources to form a comprehensive understanding of a complex issue. Number four, 
<coughs> acquisition of the message. That means the process of gaining access to and understanding media content. Example, watching a news broadcast, reading a new newspaper article or listening to a podcast. All of these components are interconnected and essential for effective media literacy. By understanding and applying these skills, individuals can become more critical consumers of media and make informed decisions. <clears throat>